Turing was a very significant figure in the 20th century. He was one of Britain's greatest mathematicians. He was a code breaker. He was a philosopher. He died in 1954, aged just 41. He touched so many aspects of science, of technology, and of our everyday lives today. We wanted to look at his life and his legacy here in the 21st century. Alan Turing is fairly well known for being a pioneer of computing. Uh, he designed specifications for a universal computer that you can program to do pretty much anything in 1945. The result of that was a machine called the Pilot Ace. The Pilot Ace, in its day the world's fastest computer, is the star of the show here at the Science Museum. It's a way into seeing how he thought. I don't think it's too fanciful to say that it's Alan Turing's mind made into metal and glass valves. As soon as the Pilot Ace computer was running successfully, people wanted access to it to solve problems. The world's first passenger jet airliners were called Comets, and they were the future. The public absolutely loved flying in them. Tragically, in 1954, one of these Comet jets exploded in mid-air, crashed into the sea, everyone on board was killed. It was a race against time because there was a fundamental design flaw. The wreckage was salvaged out of the sea and the pilot ace was put to use. Millions of measurements needed to be crunched and it was the pilot ace that found out what the problem was. It was very important to us that we chose a biographical focus to the exhibition. It's not just a story of, of like a lone genius. He was working with many other people. It's been very interesting for us to kind of track the threads of some of his motivations. We were very pleased to be able to show a rather moving set of archives lent to us by the family of a boy called Christopher Morecambe, written by Alan Turing when he was a teenager at school in Dorset. Christopher Morecambe was in the year above Alan Turing at school. Alan Turing was absolutely besotted with him. The tragedy came when Christopher Morecambe died, aged 18, from tuberculosis. Alan Turing was heartbroken, and from that moment on he started to think about ideas about whether the mind could live outside the body. And he started to sketch out these ideas in an extraordinary set of writings, including one called The Nature of Spirit. And that's very much what he was working on later in his life. In 1951, Alan Turing visited the Science Museum with a group of friends. One of the exhibits that he came to see was a set of cybernetic tortoises invented by somebody he knew quite well, William Gray Walter. They kind of chase light and they'll avoid obstacles and so on. And Turing was really taken by them. Uh, when he visited, he was able to work out how they operated. Alan Turing's probably most famous for his work at Bletchley Park in the Second World War as one of the code breakers, helping to decipher German military messages. Alan Turing's contribution to it was to solve a problem known as the Naval Enigma. These were Enigma machines which would turn plain text into what looks like gobbledygook. But also he broke the codes of society. He was convicted under anti-homosexuality legislation in 1952 of what was called gross indecency and given a choice of either imprisonment or a chemical castration he chose to undergo this chemical treatment but a few months after the end of his treatment uh, he decided it seems to take his own life. Alan Turing's work was so diverse that it's, it's kind of hard to track exactly what the legacy is today. But every time we use a computer today, we're enjoying the legacy of Alan Turing and other computing pioneers. I mean, it's not just computers on desks. It's absolutely everywhere. It's embedded in the 21st century. I can't help thinking that if he could have used any of the kit that we've got today, it would have just been a remarkable thing to see.